I want to talk to you in this video about the subject of tachyons. Now these are hypothetical particles that travel at the speed of light and you might think well that's just a science fiction idea but in fact tachyons are allowed by conventional physics by the special theory of relativity and because of that uh, because there's nothing in physics that says they couldn't exist, searches have been carried out for them. So far they've turned up empty-handed, but in, in the future it's quite possible that we may discover them. They are certainly a possibility uh, within physics. So that's today's topic, tachyons. Tachyons were first proposed in pre-relativistic times by the German physicist Arnold Sommerfeld and named in 1967 by Gerald Feinberg from the Greek tachis, meaning swift. By extension of this terminology, particles that travel slower than light are called tardions. Sometimes they're called bradions as well. This includes any normal known particle with non-zero rest mass. Photons, which travel at exactly the speed of light, are sometimes known as luxons. The existence of tachyons is allowed by the mathematics of the special theory of relativity, one of the basic equations of which is E equals m over the square root of 1 minus v squared over c squared, where E is the mass energy of a particle, m its rest mass, v its velocity, and c is the speed of light. This shows that for tardions, particles of ordinary matter, e increases as v increases and becomes infinite when v equals c, thus preventing an initially slower than light particle from being accelerated up to the speed of light and beyond. What about a particle for which v is always greater than c? In this case, v squared over c squared is greater than 1, so that the denominator in the equation above is an imaginary number, the square root of a negative real number. If m has a real value, e is imaginary, which is hard for physicists to swallow because e is a measurable quantity. If m takes an imaginary value, however, then because one imaginary number divided by another is real, e is real. Tachyons are allowed, therefore, providing a, they never cross the light barrier, and b, they have an imaginary rest mass, which is physically more acceptable since the rest mass of an object that never stops isn't directly measurable. Bizarrely, tachyons would slow down if they gained energy and accelerate if they lost energy. This leads to a problem in the case of charged tachyons because charged particles that move faster than the speed of light in the surrounding medium give off energy in the form of Cherenkov radiation. Charged tachyons would continuously lose energy even in a vacuum through Cherenkov emission. This would cause them to gain speed, thus lose energy at ever greater rate, thus accelerating even more and so on, leading to a runaway reaction and the release of an arbitrarily large amount of energy. More worryingly, as the physicist Gregory Benford and his colleagues first pointed out, tachyons seem to lead to a time paradox because of their ability to send messages into the past. Suppose Alice on Earth and Boole on a planet circling around Sirius can communicate using what has been called a tachyon anti-telephone. They agree in advance that when Boole receives a message from Alice, he'll reply immediately. Alice promises to send a message to Boole at noon her time, if and only if she hasn't received a message from Boole by 10 a.m. The snag is that both messages being superluminal, faster than light, travel back in time. If Alice sends her message at noon, Boole's reply couldn't reach her before 10 a.m. Then, as Benford and colleagues wrote in their 1970 paper called The Tachyonic Antitelephone, the exchange of messages will take place if and only if it doesn't take place. 
Perhaps not surprisingly, despite numerous searches, no tachyon detection has so far been confirmed. The same is true of another hypothetical faster-than-light particle called a dibuk, which is Hebrew for a roving spirit, which would have imaginary mass, energy, and momentum. Dibuks proposed by Raymond Fox of the Israel Institute of Technology are so strange that some of their odd properties cancel out to an observer, yet, interestingly, they avoid the causality problem of tachyons. Thanks for tuning in. Uh, please subscribe to this channel if you want to hear more about my science and music, and I'll see you again next time.